So when I think about the ways that secularism has shaped the local church, um, the first thing that comes to mind to me is to go to the heart, the way secularism has shaped the heart of the church's leaders. And hmm. what I mean by that is, I think the, the problem of life in a secular age is one where there's this core distrust of transcendence, uh -huh. this, this core condition of doubt. Uh -huh. And as a result, what happens for a lot of pastors and church leaders is consciously or unconsciously, they're going, I don't know that I have a great deal of confidence that God is actually going to show up in this gathering. Uh -huh. So I've got to make something happen. Uh, I've got to make people feel something. Yeah. I've got to make them, uh, I've got to make them feel moved. I've got to make yeah. them feel engaged. And that gives birth to a whole variety of wackiness uh -huh. in contemporary American churches. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, when I think about leadership in secularism, one of the things that come to mind is that, that I, I think for many churches, uh, the marketplace, specifically business and entrepreneurship, has sort of become the model, right? And because the church is seen as one one force, one institution competing for a million against a million other institutions, and so it, this shows up in interesting thing, in interesting way. So you'll find like, uh, uh, you know, leadership as this uh, as this major theme among pastors. They're very focused on leadership, which is sort of just coming straight out of the business world. Which you know, it's good to know leadership skills. But if you're thinking about it, I think from a, from a sort of pragmatic, worldly perspective. Uh, I think that says something about it, but 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 also when you think about church growth, when you think about church branding, when you think about church, um, you know, events like you described, right? Because uh, in a world where there's lots of content, uh, whether it's in film, music, whatever, you have to provide an event, right? Mm -hmm. This is what people want. They want an event. This is why they're not buying music. They're going to concerts, and that's why where musicians make money. Same thing happens in church, right? Mm -hmm. if, if there's lots of churches to choose from, lots of different things, you've got to have an event that's exciting, that draws people in. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I think what's happening is pastors unconsciously adopting the business practices, best business practices. Right. Um, and in the short term, I think it's often successful in you know, getting people into the, the pews. Right. What, what terrifies me is if they're drawn in by that, mm -hmm. what happens when something else more engaging, more interesting, mm -hmm. uh, and that is social, more socially acceptable comes up? Yeah. The adoption of certain technologies gets uncontested as yeah. part of this sort of uh, part of this sort of phenomenon where, we're, again, we're saying, like, we've got to give people the best experience possible. So whatever technology is available, yeah. we're going to use it and, and make this more exciting. And the example I always like to talk about is image magnification. This is something that a lot of churches adopt sort of un unthinkingly, like, we've got a big room. Let's get cameras. Let's, yeah. get the, let's get the pastor blown up on the screen so right. we can see his facial expressions. And there's, you know, there's a great argument to make. Oh, uh -huh. you see his face, and it's more engaging, and it's all of this. And I always just ask, yeah, but where else in our culture are people experiencing image magnification? Uh -huh. Sporting events, yep. rock concerts, political rallies. <laughs> and always the guy's face that's being magnified is yeah. the hero. You know, These that's are heroes. Right. These are superheroes. And so when we adopt that technology thoughtlessly, I think we end up, you know, it comes with a certain kind of meaning Absolutely. that you almost can't divorce it from. And, and so how this is secular is that the, uh, being in church, worshiping together in church, is not this solemn, sacred act where we are worshiping a living and transcendent God. It comes to feel, because of the medium, it comes to feel like all the other events that we are involved in, right? So if you went to a concert last night and you saw that image mag magnification, right, you're thinking, Okay, this is that same kind of thing. It's another interesting thing. It might be enriching to my life. It might give me some, some truth. But it's fundamentally the same category of thing in the world. And in, in order to, to be in this secular age, we have to say we are categ this is categorically different. Mm -hmm. The faith is not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it looks exactly the same, yeah. we can't expect people to believe it's different. And fundamentally what's happening when the church is gathering is different than everything else.
It should be. Yes, that's right. That's right. It should be. Uh, and we have resources for this. I mean, built into the liturgy, the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper is inherently something that right. says, no, we are communing with a living God. Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's a, from a secular perspective, you know, crazy. Yeah. But uh, we have to lean into that and pull away from, you know, videos advertising the men's Bible study and things like that. Absolutely.